So today, Dad, we are taking hold of Galatasaray and trying to rebuild them within five Be an years. Interesting one, this one, Will. Very interesting because we know how intense the Turkish rivalry between quite a few of the teams are. I mean, we're yeah, looking here yeah. at the history of the league. Hold, current holders: Besiktas, uh, another Istanbul team, Istanbul yeah. team, Basaksehir. I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to pronounce some of these names. Finished top the year before then Fener Galatasaray had a bit of a run Fenerbahce, yeah. Fenerbahce down in 13 14 so, who have dominated for years think, yeah. yeah that's their their main rivalry between the two you did tell me that there is an actual rivalry name between that game yeah it is a Katala Azra Derby or in English, Intercontinental Derby. Right, okay. So that's I probably... I that right. Yeah, I mean, historically, those are the two biggest teams in, in Turkey. And we've had, like, Besiktas come onto the scene quite recently as a bit of a European force as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting one. And I don't think, of course, Galatasaray, they're their favourites at the start. I don't think they are. I think Fenerbahce might be. Mm. They've built quite a good team recently. So that's what we're looking at. But historically, Galatasaray have won the most league titles. Yeah. 22 in total. Fenerbahce are second to that I believe I don't with 19. The fans don't think it's a good achievement to win the league if they haven't beaten Fenerbahce at the same time. Right, okay. They don't class it as we've won the league. Right, that's <laughs> so quite... That goes to show how bad this rivalry is. Yeah, I mean what I really like about Turkey, I mean it's what I like about it but also the reason why I'd never go to watch a game mm. is how intense oh. and yeah. very uh, intimidating the stadiums are. And if you look at like these stadium pitches here, that's the Fenerbahce one. Look how close it is to the pitch mm. and the same with Galatasaray. It is like steeped walls, yeah. very intimidating. I remember seeing something with Ryan Giggs when he played there for Man United and he came on and said it's a very, very intimidating stadium to go to and play. Yeah. Whether it was the new stadium, I can't remember now. And he did say, he, he came out to inspect the pitch at three hours before the game, the, 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 the crowd were already there. It was yeah. full, the ground was full. Yeah. And he just thought, what on earth's going on here? And now they just chanting, chanting and singing and singing. Yeah. And he said, it can be very intimidating for young players to go there. I, so, I would I would has a guess as yeah. yeah, that would be, it would be a place that I would be very scared of. So Definitely. let's take a look then at some of the transfers that I have brought in at the start of this season, because they, I do actually think that this summer's transfers, they've done really well with some of these transfers. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, I mean, Patrick Van Arnold, uh, a Crystal Palace player that we've seen recently. Yeah. Uh, a defender, Victor Nelson was brought in in the summer, quite a good young D Danish centre back, quite a good defender, Sasha Bowie as well, very good. A couple of Romanians being brought in here. I think they're doing what I would have been doing, yeah. bringing in these young. I mean, uh, Van Arno is not um, obviously young, but bringing in these young players uh, to to help out. So we're in for a good start, then. Eh? Yeah, and I've continued that. Yeah. What I've basically done is I started off bringing in a bit of a bargain pick in Nico Lopez. I think that they were struggling slightly up top with a little bit of numbers, so I've brought in a guy who can do a bit of both. He can play out on the right side. He can play up front. This guy's an absolute steal, really, because he does look really good and yeah. he. Only 27 years of age, and we picked him up for 1.5 million pounds from mm. Tigres in Mexico. So that's that's a good start, I think, in the transfer window. But we did have a little bit more money as well. Another bit of a bargain, Gustavo, a striker, because I think we need numbers up yeah. there. I think he was a good pickup as well. 925 k This one, I think people are going to like. Andrea Papetti, he can be a world-class defender on this day. And I really like him, and he has great potential. Only 19. We keep saying to me, any Italian players are good defenders. So. Oh, cracking, yeah. cracking defender. So I'm excited to see what he can bring to us. Five billion pounds from uh, Brescia, and a young. Turkish player from Altenordu. And a little fun fact about Altenordu before we go any further. They have a club vision where they're only allowed to sign Turkish players. That's good, I like that. Yeah. I mean, there is restrictions in the league. You have to have only nine foreign players over the age of 23, I believe. And you can have one more foreign player under mm. 23. And that is it. And in the starting 11, there, there can only be a certain amount. So there is like a, a basis focused on Turkish players. Yeah. So I'm, I'm making sure throughout this rebuild that I obviously abide to that. Burak Ince is a youngster, 17 years of age, a very good center attacking midfielder. Now my, my thinking is with him, he might not develop quick enough to be able to use him in a first team. But if he doesn't, we can probably make a profit from him. Yeah, we yeah. signed him for such a cheap cost that he's already worth 11 million to 13 million. Maybe we can turn over a bit of a profit yeah. from him and uh, just don't sell him to Fenerbahce. That would be uh, no, the only that. thing I would probably that, say. Yeah. So tactically then, if we're looking at this, this is what I'm going with. And I've called it the Gala 4231. It's slightly different to what I would usually go for. And it's very similar in ways to other tactics we've used in rebuilds. 
But I'm using, I wanted to use a Trakatista, and then I realized that all three players who can play across the front here are quite good in the Trakatista role. So I thought, i use all three of them as Trakatistas. <laughs> now, a little bit of an explanation of a Trakatista is someone who can operate in the attacking midfield, set to four positions, so you can play in other different roles as well. But it's kind of like a mixture of many different roles, which is why I liked it. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how this plays out. We've got a deep line playmaker, box to box, very standard stuff at the back there, attacking mentality. Uh, it's focusing the play through the middle, where I think we are strongest, but we are like pepper in the box. We're pepper in the goal, pepper in the box. Uh, in transition, it's more of a Gagan press. And out of position as well, we're pushing very high at the pitch, getting stuck in. I think there's only ever one way you can do that in the Turkish leagues. I'm going to say a Turkish side is yeah. well known for this, isn't it? And we're using the offside trap as well. So this is how we're setting up. And these are the players that I'm securing into the roles for every single game that I think possible. The reason why I'm getting Gustavo in, he's a young Brazilian on loan from Falmacau. Um, but we have an option on him if we wish to... Uh, go for it, 3.4 million pound at the end of the season. Great, so yeah, I think if we play him and use him, he's very decent. We could make a good bit of, uh, a good deal from that yeah. if we get a bit of transfer budget next season. So we've already started the season. We've had a few games and we've done all right. Our only problem is European contest. First off, we were knocked out by Sparta Prague in the Champions League, like the, the pathway for that. Bad start. We then beat St. Johnson of Scotland. We defeat them. A 3-0 win against Antwerp at home. Gustavo Hattrick, you think, lovely. Yeah. Then we go away and we lose 4-0. <laughs> No. <laughs> Honestly, I don't quite know what happened. Really don't. So that means we go in the Europa Conference, the third tier yeah. European competition. So we still have European football, but it's not as great. In the league itself, we take a look at some of these league games. We lost our first one to Istanbul. Bad start to the yeah, season. Not very good at all. Uh, we win the next one, Gustavo, again, and we win the, the, the following, the last match that we played so far, 3 2. Our next game is against. Uh, Bashik Das, who are obviously league holders. Yeah. So, I just want to briefly look at our season preview. Uh, we are second favourites in behind Bashik Das with Fenerbahce up there as well. That's after the signings that we have made. So, I think we've bumped ourselves up because of the signings that we have made. We've done quite well there. And we have a couple of players. Nico Lopez, that guy we signed for like a million pound. He's in the media Dream 11 as, as well as Marcal, uh, our centre-back, who's in there as well. So, we've got a couple of players who the league media consider to be uh, the best in the league in their position but it's all down to us to see whether this tactic can do it for us throughout the season um, competition wise we can see our group here uh, that's a polish team pogon we've got hibernium from scotland oh, yeah. and that's a difficult one fcsb that's the the style bucharest team yeah. reformed um, from romania that's going to be our difficult one in the europa conference league so first season let's simulate see how we do yeah and so in the first season, we take the league. We win hey. the league. Let's take a look at it then, a little bit more into it. 83 two points, points in total, two points above Trabzonspor. Another good team yeah. in the Turkish leagues. Look how far down Fenerbahce are. Ooh, yeah, all yeah, the way down Europe. in sixth place. So Our goal difference, though. Our goal difference is goals. massive. Yeah, we lost seven games, but we didn't draw as many as what Trabzonspor did, where we managed to pick up more points. Batshuayi and Gustavo was the league's top scorers, both on 22. But this is where you can see the league was won, because Nico Lopez and Gustavo had the highest average ratings, and Nico Lopez also got the most assists with 16. So he's had a fantastic time there. Yeah. yeah, obviously we see him, we had a bit of a ropey start to begin with. So let's see past positions then. We kind of like grew oh, into yeah. it. And that's where we kind of dominated at the end of the season, the back half of the season. That middle part was where we found our feet a bit maybe with the tactic. And that's when we progressed, got used to it. And then we fired on all cylinders yeah. and carried on. So if we take a look, Pashik Das were top for a long time. Ooh. They dropped down into third place. Well, they chucked that way, didn't they? They definitely did. It was theirs to, to win all season, yeah. around Christmas. That middle part is where yeah. they started to fail. So yeah, that's that's big for us. I mean, we, we had a look at other competitions then. We were the winners of the cup as well. Oh, that ain't bad then, is it? So a we've done, double. We've done with the domestic double, double yeah. on penalties against Besiktas as well oh, even better massive game yeah. what makes this even more impressive to be honest is the fact that they scored in the 80, 83rd and the 87th minute to go 2-1 up we pulled it back with a penalty in the 94th minute. <laughs> yes. We then scored with the same guy in the 96th minute and they scored in 105 plus 1 stoppage time yeah. of extra time and then, of course, we beat them on penalties in the end. We did not miss, whereas they unfortunately did. And they had a player sent off. They missed 
two penalties, Batshuayi missing one of them. So before you find out how we got in in Europe, yes. we are actually the only Turkish side that have done the treble, which yeah. is the league, the cup, and a European cup. Yeah. Because they won the... The Cup Winners' Cup. The Cup Winners' Cup. And that same year, they won the Super Cup as well, I think it was. Yeah. In the year 2000, was it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So Turn of the century. The only Turkish team to do the treble. So have we done the treble in our first season? Well, have let's we? find out. Unfortunately, we have not. We were knocked out in the second round by Real Batiste. Rangers went on and won that competition. But we have we got through the group, which we kind oh, of expected to. I got all excited and thought we'd done a record. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's going to be plenty more opportunities yeah. for that. Tottenham, obviously, they had Trubs on Spore in their group there. Uh, we qualified top. We lost one, drew one, won three. But then we were knocked out in the second round knockout by Real Batiste in a 4-1. Uh, they beat us 4-0 at home. So bad result there. Yeah, Realities do have a good team, to be fair. Yeah. So yeah, not a bad first season. Let's take some look at some club statistics then, because 42 goals in 60 games from Gustavo, very good from him, yeah, considering how much we paid for him. Yeah. Really cheap. Nico Lopez, 15 goals and 27 assists. Yes. Two good players there then. Absolutely. Uh, we got a couple more assists. Uh, a couple more people come, chipping in with some decent amount of goals there as well. So average rating as well. You can see a lot of us have greens, which is obviously a great sign to have going forward and that's the reason why we kind of went on and won the league this season. So by the way, viewers, of course, we always make these safe game files now available for Patreon members on yeah. the £5 tier. What we're going to do going forward now, Dad, is we're going to set these Patreon members challenges right yeah. because obviously they can download it and do whatever they want we only do five years the reason for that everybody always asks why don't you do an extra year if you get that close because else we have to do where that for stop? everybody yeah, yeah where, where do you stop? stop yeah so why not we give you guys the access yeah. to do that and you we give you five yeah. years because sometimes we do buy a lot of young players coming through and by the end of the five years we've got a really strong side exactly that you can, you dominate. can take on from us yeah, yeah. there's something I mean, we've done like builder nations where we took them as far as we could yeah. in that five years turkey might be another one yeah so if you'd like to see that page.com forward slash megaloot gaming the five pound tier is where you can do that you get the save game file the same day that these rebuilds come out and if you're on the three pound tier you can even vote for who we do next so there's lots of benefits and a massive thank you to all my patreon members who have come in recently and ones from previous you really do help support me as content creator do yeah. appreciate it and it makes me pay for dad's wages for these videos which keeps going what? up with his popularity what wages <laughs> So, in the second season then, we did activate that clause to bring in Gustavo Osunsao. I, I think did, it's a we? good decision because yeah. already he's double his value. He did quite well for us last season. He's young as well. 35 games he played, 5 assists, 3, three goals. So, I think it was definitely worth bringing him in. But I think some of the most important deals that we did were in the, in the free transfer market. Something now that is a massive part of football, yeah. I think. And it's going to be bigger. Yeah, definitely, because yeah. these players now who... Aren't being who aren't going to cost any wages. They're basically saying, well, instead of paying ten million pound for me, wait an extra year and you can give me five million and yeah. I'll sign for you. Yeah. And that's basically what's happening really in the in the grand scheme of things. One of them being Bubakar Kamara. I'm quite surprised he decided that he wanted to come to Galatasaray, but I'm you know I'm more than happy because he's a fantastic young talent who can play in the CDM role or at centre back. Somebody who's like quite hotly interested in going to the Premier League this year. The yeah. fact that we managed to bring him to Turkey is a big push. I think. Dennis Sicaria, somebody who might have already made his move by the time this video comes out to maybe even Manchester United. There's so many clubs looking yeah. at Dennis Sicaria right now. We've picked him up again on a free transfer. Two really good holding centre midfielders means we're bolstering our midfield. Now, we have brought in a backup goalkeeper because we needed one. We haven't got, we've got Musilera for I think one more season than he departs. So we need to make sure we bring in backup goalkeepers. That's quite and good this well, guy yeah. is a good pickup, I think, for 2.5 yeah million pound German goalkeeper they can always rely on a German goalkeeper yeah. they, they're the best around I think <laughs> Ali Akman though is another Turkish player who from, I'm really happy to from bring one in. of your team isn't it? from Eintracht Frankfurt yeah. this guy he looks incredible I think um, I'm really happy with bringing him in because finishing 15 composure anticipation and off the ball all 15 good agility Great physicals, 20 years of age. It's good. Yeah. The price we paid for him as well, only £8 million. Eintracht Frankfurt got him on a free transfer a couple of seasons ago, and they haven't even used him. He was out on loan, eight goals in 28 appearances. I brought him back home. I brought him back to Turkey. Using my 
My links to Eintracht Frankfurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My German team. So, yeah, Ali Ackman, I'm excited because now, obviously, Gustavo had a fantastic season. Mm. But I think Ali Ackman can take us further yeah. than Gustavo. So that's that my thing. You can play both of them up front as well. That's true. Yeah. On the outs, we didn't have a lot of people going out. We just had a couple of squad players who left uh, and a couple of players going out on loan. Tactically, we're looking very similar. However, of course, we've brought in Kamara, who can't play centre midfield naturally, but plays in a deeper role. So I thought, yeah, let's try him there. Yeah. We'll bring him deeper. We'll try him there and just see how we go. Now, I do feel a bit bad because we've activated Austin Sal's contract to, to join here on a, on, a, on a permanent basis. And then we secured Sakaria and Kamara and we want to play them the most times. Yeah. But what a player to bring on the bench or when these guys are injured. Right, and yeah. not to mention, we've got a couple of Romanians who can play there and a couple of Turkish players who are also really good too. So we're filling these roles quite well with our foreign players, but we also have backups and first team roles for a lot of our Turkish players that we have as well. So this could be a very good season for us to kick on even further. Schedule wise how have we done well unfortunately in the champions league playoff we played Shakhtar and i think that's a that's a tricky that way we've been done there yeah. really that's a hard they're one they're a hard team to play against yeah them, we yeah. drew two all at home and we lost 4-1 away yeah. they're they're difficult they i mean they don't have like restrictions like they they bring they seem to bring in a lot of like yeah. brazilians and stuff don't they so they've done us there but that does mean we go straight into europa league so our job really i would say because we are turkish league winners and we still didn't go into the Champions League. We need to do well in these European we've got, competitions. We've got a couple of good teams in that league. We have. Haven't we? We, we haven't drawn an easy draw. No, there, have we? PSV, Slovan, Bratislava and Arsenal. Oh, yeah. I mean, PSV and Arsenal, we're going to be fighting for them for one of those positions, I think. Arsenal got a young side. They're not going to enjoy coming to our stadium, are they? No, no, no. And I think what that's are, our trouble. Is What do the fans say when they come to the stadiums? I don't know. Welcome to hell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. They're right as well, really, aren't yeah. they? So that's the difficult part because we need to make sure then that we do well in these European competitions to make sure coefficiently we can automatically qualify for Champions League. We don't yeah. have to worry about these playoffs where we get drawn against Shakhtar. Mm. Now, we didn't start the season very well because we lost the Super Cup to Besiktas 3-2. Oh. Uh, again, a late one, 90th minute that they knocked in that's the a winner. Killer, isn't it? Yeah, Trabzonspor, which is another rivalry that we have, uh, competitive rivalry, one or draw against them at the start of the season. This is where we started picking things up though uh, a 3-1 victory against K Kasim Passa uh, and a 2-0 victory against this team here which I'll refuse to uh, try and pronounce 2-0 <laughs> against them Ali Akman they'll get in a few goals and that we have seen there. Poor. well Poor. done yeah, well done nailed it yes yeah. absolutely nailed it <laughs> let's simulate the second season and so another victory Retaining the title. Oh, look who we won the total from on the same amount of points as well. On the same oh. amount of points <laughs> as Fenerbahce. Now, I want to have a look at the rules of this. Is it average. done by goal difference? Is it done its results between teams first? So what did I say at the beginning of the video? So we win the league because we have better results against Fenerbahce. Oh. Do you think that's done on purpose? Obviously, it's got to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. That's why the fans. Are, that's why the fans love to beat them in the derby, yeah. isn't it? I mean, we did it, have, it can come up against that. True. Yeah, yeah. We did have better goal difference. So if it was like two draws or one yeah. win, one win, it's done on so by what, goal difference. What was the two results between us? So we then? need to see the two results. So if we take a look, the first game we played against them at Ooh. home. In September was a 2-0 victory. Ali Akman with both the goals. Yeah, yeah. Made himself a hero there, the 20-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, two goals yeah. against Fenerbahce. But then if you go down even further, we lost the away leg 2-1. Now, whether it's done because like on an aggregate situation yeah. or goal difference, it. it doesn't matter. We were two, one we either way. Two, but we scored the one away goal. Yeah, but we also had better goal difference, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Either way, we would have won. So it might be the away goal that's won us the league. Possibly, yeah. So we've either way, we've managed to do it. Even though we lost seven games and they only lost three, they drew 12. So they drew a lot of games. That's where they lost it, really. Yeah. yeah. But they're annoyed with that. What I am pleased with, though, Ali Akman did manage to get top scorer. 21 years of age, getting the top scorer in the Brilliant. Turkish League. Let's hope that we can see stuff like that in real life for Eintracht Frankfurt, please. Andrea Pepetti and Nico Lopez in the highest average ratings there. And Nico Lopez yet again getting the most assists in the league. Muslera getting second there for most clean sheets. I think that's a great start to the this end of the season. Yeah. But there's obviously stuff that we also need to, to tick off. Yeah. We need to retain some competitions, including the cup. Which we managed to do yet again on penalties <laughs> against Besiktas. <laughs> So, I mean, Besiktas well, uh, must be hating us right now. They beat now. us in the first cup final. The, the, yeah. um, 
the one at the beginning of the season. Yeah. So we just done it at the end of the season. Didn't we really? Yeah, so. exactly. So we went. We went in the lead. We took the lead after ten minutes. Dennis Sakaria. They equalised in the forty-third minute. It then went to extra time. They scored in the 93rd minute. We got a penalty again in the 95th minute. And then again, we only missed one penalty. But they, even though they had a player sent off in the 111th, also missed three penalties Ooh. out of the four that pressure. was taken. Pressure. You they take couldn't the pressure. handle the pressure no. at all. I mean, where is it? The stadium that they played at is, I think that's the National Stadium. Yeah. Uh, I don't think a team actually plays there. Correct me if I'm wrong, viewers, but yeah, that's it kind of, yeah, teams. Yeah, so it looks like it's the Turkish National Stadium. It's got the running track and everything. Yeah. So it's not like we had home advantage or anything like that. So yeah, they can handle the pressure two years in a row, missing penalties to win that. What about other competitions though? We are, of course, in in Europe. We finish third in our Europa League group in behind PSV and Arsenal and we were knocked out the first round by Luda Goretz which is a difficult one How to did we take. get on against Arsenal? Just, a, just as an interest. Did so we, we lost, we we beat them 2-0 at home. home. Yeah, yeah. See? So I told I you mean, the youngsters wouldn't be down at our stadium, would they? Exactly, yeah. Real Madrid went on and won the Europa League. <laughs> Team didn't yeah. expect to play in no. the Europa League, is it? But yeah, let's take a look more into the league. We won two, one against Slovan Bratislava, one against Arsenal 2-0. We drew against PSV, but we lost both of them and we lost to Arsenal 3-1 at the Emirates, yeah. unfortunately. So, bit of a tricky one. It seems like home advantage for us in Turkey is massive. Yeah. No one likes going to Turkey to play football. No. It's, it's a known thing and it's a very intimidating place to go to. Yeah. Oh, I think like even as like a Manchester United fan, when I if I see we've got, say, Fenerbahce or Galatasaray in yeah. one of these European competitions, it's like, oh, good. And then you think, oh, oh no. the away legs yeah. will be horrible. Yeah. We're not going to get a good result in the away leg. Mm. You fancy your chances when you're at home, but not on the away leg. You've got to play your experienced players when you go over there. Uh, just yeah, just people who can handle youngsters. it. Yeah, the youngsters just can't handle the yeah, I agree. combination, really. So. so let's take a look at the squad-wise then, because we've done quite well this season. Ali Akman got 30 goals in 49 appearances. Nico Lopez, 10 goals and 18 assists. He has been fantastic for us so far. A nice little pickup. And the highest average rating, Andrea Papetti, also done very well. Just talking about the, the, the crowd again, I'll, I'll, an interesting fact for you. 2011, yeah. they actually won the loudest crowd on record, and I, I don't know whether it's still on the, still with the record, but they won the loudest crowd, 140 decibels they, they recorded. I mean, they I take like noise. flares and stuff oh, like yeah, that. It's, it's well known for the flags, and it. I mean, talk about flags. We know a story about a flag, don't we? God, yeah, yeah. With Graham Souness when he was manager over there, the Fenerbahce manager. Uh, was he president. Fenerbahce or Galatasaray? He was Galatasaray. Graham he, Souness he took, was, yeah. He took out a yellow and orange flag. Yeah, that's right. The Fenerbahce president said he couldn't understand why Galatasaray had hired a... Um, a was cripple, it? wasn't a it? A cripple, yeah, because he had open heart surgery. And um, from what I remember the story, they were drawing one each in a cup final and in the last seconds, one of my favourite strikers, English striker, Dean Saunders, well, he's British striker. Yeah. Dean Saunders scored a screamer into the top corner and right. they won 2-1. And Graham Sooners, part of the story was, he, he ran out to the pitch after the game and all that and and, and all the players had gone down to the Fenerbahce end. Uh, the Galatasaray. Galatasaray end and they were doing all the flame. And someone handed each player the big flag that they fly. Yeah. And each player was having a go at doing it and going along the line. and, said, and Gal uh, Graham Sooners was the last one, he said. So I've got the flag and I'm waving like that. He said, I've turned to go like that to give it to someone and there was no one there. So he said, I've turned and he said, and all the players are sort of just walking off. And he said, I didn't know, he said, but I looked up into the grandstand. He said, and I've seen the president of Fenerbahce. He yeah. said, and I thought, who's the cripple now? So he said, I just went running up. He said, I just stuck the flag into the middle of the center pitch. He said, I'm running off. He said, it was a riot. Yeah. He says, as I'm running back to the tunnel, he said, all I can see is all these fans trying to get onto the pitch. And I'm thinking, I've got to get in the tunnel quickly. Yeah. So he said, I've managed to get into the tunnel. And he said, I thought, and Chris was like, he said, I've got away with it. He said, as I thought, I've got away with it. He said, whack. He said, one of the fans gone into the tunnel and smacked me. He said, give me a right foot up. He said, but he said, I caused a riot. He said, it's the worst thing I've ever done in yeah, Turkey. Yeah. Said, so. I mean, I've seen like pictures and stuff. That oh. looks very bad. Oh, what a bad situation <laughs> for Graham Tunis. Go on, go on YouTube and find it. It's funny as hell, yeah. really. But, funny, uh, funny now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, probably yeah. not the time. Not the time. <laughs> oh, you look at the two fans, that there was a right there. So it probably wasn't a good thing to do at the time. But no, absolutely no, not. No, but uh, yeah. But the fans are very. 140 decibels. That is loud. loud in the stadium, isn't it? Right, so the start of the transfer window, I went for this guy. Umar, I'm going to call him. I think that's how you pronounce Umar, maybe how you say it uh, in Turkish. But yes, he's a fantastic centre attacking midfielder who can also play out on the Wings, right. Yeah, We've got quick, a couple of those roles. Yeah, he's yeah. very good. Now, he comes from one of our rivals, Trabzonspor. Come through their youth academy, in fact. But when you start winning the league, 
these players are like, yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think this would happen in real life. That's what I'm probably saying. But maybe in football well, manager simulation. You look at teams in the British League, they, they start for the young teams, but their ambition is always to play for the biggest team in their country. Yeah, but maybe loyalties are slightly different in this yeah, country yeah, than true, they yeah. are yeah. when it's, you know, life and death. In, the, in situations, I mean, we laugh, but it probably is. Yeah, you don't Life know. Yeah, we don't there. know that. that um, thing happens over there, do because we? I'm going to show you something that's possibly even worse in a sec. So we signed him anyway for 9.5 billion pounds, which I think is a great deal to bring him in. Yeah, because he's a fantastic player, which I really like the look of. Who can play in two different roles? We're quite light at fullback, so I decided to bring in Luca Pellegrini, uh, an Italian fullback, to go alongside Andrea Papetti. Where we're starting something here. Italian defence looks yeah, really good. Looking he's good, very yeah. capable at the back. Very good signing. And I mention worse because I signed Fenerbahce's goalkeeper on a free transfer. That's probably the worst position as well to have a, a signing coming from that team because he's he's close to the fans all the time. Yeah. He can't run into the middle of the pitch with a no. no. It's just all these flares coming over the goals all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is <laughs> he's in trouble, isn't he, Brave in the Derby? Man. Um, Brave man. So Artai B India, I think we signed him a couple of times to be fair on Foot Manager because he's a great goalkeeper. Yeah. I mean he's had seven cats for Turkey. But what I will protect him with is he he wasn't like born and raised from Fenerbahce. This is the club that he came from, Ankara. So it's a different city. So maybe he hasn't been clued up. <laughs> but he is at Fenerbahce for a long time, four yeah. seasons. Yeah. And he obviously hasn't been clued up, but a free transfer. Uh he's already kept us two clean sheets as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm really sorry, Fenerbahce fans. The way we've managed to to be able to sign a few players because I think we're only given about 10 million pound is we sold Victor Nelson for 8.75 million. So if we look tactically then, this is what we're lining up like. I've put Umar in that centre attacking midfield yeah, role because yeah. that's where he's been really good. I've took Dennis Sakari out of the box to box because not really, not being funny, but he he should be playing there if he's available. If yeah. he isn't, we've got a number of players who can play there. Of course, we went R-Type Bienda in here. We still got um, Polis back on the bench should we need him. So that rolls in that role. But what I think I might do actually is, obviously this is what we're looking at. Because obviously sometimes we don't really see what the starting 11 is most games because I don't fill it. If I take take a look and show you the best 11, this is what my assistant manager reckons should be the best 11. So we can see some slight differences here. And we've got Cthulhu, uh, Morutan, a couple of players who, Obviously, uh, Galatasaray fans might know and love who are like, why aren't you playing my players? They yeah. are still here. Yeah. Atak being another one who I think is quite a fan favourite right now, uh, as well as Cthulhu, who is a very capable box, box midfielder. So they are still at the club. I haven't got rid of them. They're just there. Um, and we're just using them in rotation as well as some of these players I want to guarantee game time with for their development um, to try and be better. Muslera is still there as well, which is the reason why I put Bayinde in the goal to begin with, because he retires at the end of next season yeah you'll be 38 so that's the reason for that that's the reason why we had that previous team loaded up now schedule wise with that previous team we started off with a bang didn't we just and we're in the champions league we've had to go through two rounds now of champions league which tells me that the coefficients went backwards yeah. after two years. Uh, Astana, we overtook them. Well, we took the lead against them in that second leg at home, 2 0. We beat them 4 2 on aggregate. And Young and Boys. Boys we just saw the players, too. Yeah, we beat them 2 1 and 2 0 at home. So we, we very much uh, went they're through good, easily they're a good there. Side, though, aren't they? you, yeah. They're always there or thereabouts, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We got our own back in the Super Cup. We beat uh, Besiktas 3 1, although they were down to nine men. Uh, <laughs> got a little bit tasty in that one. <laughs> Yeah. First game of the season, though, was Fenerbahce oh, at home. We scored in the first no, minute. No, Fenerbahce away, sorry. And so we scored in the first minute. We scored the first minute. Altai by India is there. We're like, yeah, all right, I'll move to you. Hopefully, the Fenerbahce game. They would have forgot about <laughs> you by then. What's our first fixture? Fenerbahce, Fenerbahce. away. <laughs> oh, no. I bet mean, he was like, oh, oh, oh God. God. I hope yeah. they forgot by now. Because it's only a month before like that's happened. So, um, oh, yeah, dear. Ali Ackman scoring it in the first minute. No surprises there was a red card there. Things got a little bit tasty again, but... A one or draw. 5 0 win our next game. Besiktas again. We beat them 2 1. Away win as well, yeah. Lopez Big away again, win. two goals. Ne Nico yeah, Lopez, fan favourite. And a 3 0 victory here as well. Uh, you, or, early um, September. Champions League group is though. Oh, Red Bull dear. Salzburg, Inter Milan, and Benfica. I would dare say we're going to struggle to get third yeah. in that. Salzburg, like, they have got an incredible young team. Yeah. They keep hold of some of their players, we're in trouble because, you know, I mean, they have Benjamin Seska, we've seen him time and time again, banging a number of goals for us yeah. in different rebuilds. It's going to be difficult to overcome this team. So, yeah, obviously Benfica and Inter Milan. 
big European giant clubs. You can't expect to be in an easy group in the in the Champions League, can you? No, absolutely. No. Before we take a look at this season, though, Dad, like Target, what are we going for? I'm going to go for 1,200. 1,200. Yeah, I like, I like. Let's go for 1,200. Let's get, get the like Target. If you like the video, push the button. Let's have a like Target. Absolutely. Smash the like Target yeah. for us, please. That'll really do, a good, do us good in the YouTube algorithm. And so, Ooh. look how close it is at the top as well. One point. We finish in third, one point Fenerbahce. behind Trabzonspor. And it does look like because Fenerbahce are above us, yet we have better goal difference, that they must have beat us yeah. in the home yeah. leg. We won the same amount of games, drew the same amount of games, lost the same amount of games. Yeah. Okay, so before we take a look a little bit further, Ali Akman, 21 goals again, was the top scorer. Nico Lopez, yet again, was think, the highest average rated. Do you think the Fenerbahce fans are laughing at us now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yes. Um, we take a look at the stages here. Look at our end oh, of season. Oh, last two games. We'd, we'd won those two games this season. We'd won the league. All we needed was another win out of the draw against team that I dare say I've never even heard of who finished seventh place Trabzonspor and Istanbul yeah both cost us there which I'm I mean Trabzonspor they beat us and they've won the league and they've won all five well, of their last games you can say that one game won the league innit yeah one, absolutely one in, a six point the league. yeah uh, and Fenerbahce really unlucky to be honest yeah they finished, to, good, uh, they? They finished good as well yeah without only conceding one goal in the last five games mm. so ah, it's so difficult I mean we take a look at our past positions we're up and down but to Towards the end of the season, it was ours to win. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we threw it away, really. Fenerbahce were dominated for the most of the season. They were chasing them. more than we will, but. Yeah. Because we had the chance to win it. Because Trabs on Sport were not top until the final day of the season. <laughs> what a time to come, so, Yeah, absolutely. I want to see then this Fenerbahce game. How did we do against them? Because, of course, we finished below them. Even though we were on the same points, we know we played them in the first game of the season. In the second time we played against them, how did we do? Well, in December, two days before Christmas, we lost 2-1 against them, which is a very disappointing result, to be honest. It wasn't a good Christmas present, was it? It was not at all. Uh, two fans scored in the 19th minute, Barisha scored in the 53rd minute, and we got one back on the 61st. Unfortunately, it was a very even game, and by XG, we should have scored more. 1.6 to their one. So it kind of looks like, you know, we should really took that away, yeah. but it wasn't for us. Uh, and it does look like as well, a couple of our players were missing in this game. Uh, and we've had to play a few players out of position during this. So a difficult game, I think. In the other competitions though, in the cup, we lost to Trabzonspor. They've done the double, 2-0. So they've built a bit of a team here. Yeah. We're back to back, they've league and Norway, cup. They? Yeah, and they've come out, of, done a double. come out of nowhere and they beat us 2-0 in the final. And we had a player injured quite early on as well. There's always oh, a lot of yellows in these games, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, Cornelius and uh, a penalty in the 86th minute was enough to defeat us in a game where we had more chances, but we didn't have the best chances. A 0.82 XG there, disappointing stuff from us. European competitions, let's see how we did. Unfortunately, we were knocked out of the group stage because we finished last. Six points though, we won two games. Who did we beat? We beat Benfica and Inter Milan. At all. But we couldn't <laughs> beat Salzburg. They beat us twice and they qualified. They beat yeah. us 1-0 away and 3-1 at their place. So that's what cost done, us. Yeah, Because yeah. if we win one of them, we qualify. Yeah. <laughs> we go through. We've done the hard work of beating the other two at home. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's tricky. That is a very tricky one, to be honest. A difficult season. Uh, I'd say it's a disappointing one. It's one thing they say in Europe competitions that you've got to win your home games. Yeah. Ali Ackman scored 34 goals in 54 appearances. If you look at like player statistics, this doesn't look no different to what we've been seeing. No. It's just a case of like, Things have teetered in matches where last time they were teetered on our side, this time we didn't get the luck of the yeah. draw. But I guess you make your own luck. Um, we need a big summer, I think. Yeah. So let's go forward to season four. So on the outs, first off was Gustavo Sal. We mentioned we brought him in on that deal where from the loan deal. We sold him for five million pound after bringing him in for 3.4. So we did make a bit of a profit. It does look like he's already got some kind of like clause in his contract where you can we can buy him for 7.6 if we want to. Yeah. But I don't think we'll be activating that because I think we've gone a step above Gustavo now uh, because we've brought in on a free trans... Oh, no, sorry. We haven't brought on a free transfer. 4.9 million pound. Pierre Kalulu as a right back. What I did notice 
at the end of that third season was our right back was injured for so long we had no good backup. Yeah. And a lot of our youngsters who are being who are midfielders were being put at right back. And maybe that's what's cost us towards the end of the season. Mm. We didn't have the squad depth. This guy brings us a lot of squad depth because he plays across the back I'm surprised three. they didn't have a good youth side there because they, their their um, youth academy is very, very good in Galatasaray. Yeah. They've got them all over the world as well. Yeah. They've even got one in, in England. Oh, right, okay. Which I find I was quite surprised but They have got a, a very good youth academy and it goes back to when they were formed. They were formed in 19, 1905. Yeah. They were formed and it's from a, a, a school. They, and that's where they, they actually come from. Uh, the first team that they ever fielded was all students. Oh, okay, yeah. Like so a they, high school team. Yeah, yeah. They've got they've got their own school, Galatasaray. So the, that's where it all started from. Oh, okay. So it's quite good, really. Yeah, they, they, they're formed. Their academies and all that are very good. But sport-wise, they they, do, they touch nearly every sport. I, I and we've the, seen that a few times yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Basketball. Yeah. Not just men's basketball, women's basketball. Yeah. Wheelchair basketball. Canoeing, running, yeah, um, so many sports they're 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 involved in, so they are a big academy really as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's good really. Sports club. Yeah. So Pierre Kalulu joins us. Let's take a look at some of the other transfers then, because a free transfer from our fellow friends at Eintracht Frankfurt, yeah. uh, Philip Kostic. I'm really happy with this signing because I love Philip Kostic, and time and time again I see him go to clubs like Bayern Munich in this. Because he's a world class, uh, well not world class, maybe like an elite level yeah. left midfielder. What he's got in that good crossing, good pace and agility and stuff like that, I like a lot. And to get him on a free transfer is an absolute bargain, really. One goal so far in three appearances with a 7.3 average rating. Now, I'm really happy with this because this is one of my favourite Turkish players. Erkan Kirku comes from Feyenoord's Youth Academy. He has grew up in Holland, but he has Turkish descendants, maybe like a Turkish father oh, right, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, because he's got nine caps for Turkey. Yep, so he is declared as a Turkish player. He is amazing on this game, has a great potential really good hidden attributes we brought him in and i think he's fantastic so he plays center mid can play up front as well and he's given us a lot of depth in the team they're good good side turkey though weren't they you know as a nation side yeah. they've always been over the few years that i can remember good international teams coming through they've had some really good sides very hard to play against and me and you was only talking about it before the video wasn't it is um the manager situation between the manager Turkey is and Galatasaray. So weird. They keep they keep swapping them over, don't they? Yeah. We'll have them we'll have them for a couple of years and you can have them back. I mean we'll let's take a, a look years. at it because if we go on to our club info, we can see the legends down here and Fati Terim, who is retired now, I can't click on it. But he was manager of Galatasaray when they won the European Cup in 2000. 2000 he yeah. then went to Fiorentina. He then went to AC Milan. Two years later, he comes back to Galatasaray. Yeah. Then he goes to Turkey and does well European competitions. Oh, 2011, yeah. he's back. Yeah. It might even been before that. And he has chopped and changed. I think he's been Galatasaray's manager about four or five times yeah. now. And he's been Turkey's manager about three or four times. And when they've done really well, he was he's the been in charge. Yeah. They, didn't they reach the semi -finals? semi finals of a World Cup? Yeah. So, European might have been European both. I think yeah, it might have sure. been both. I think yeah. they've done both under him. Uh, Turkish fans can obviously can, uh, can correct us if we are wrong there. But yeah, I mean, a legend at the club, and for a good reason, probably a legend in Turkey. Mm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Gotta be, yeah. Oh, well, maybe Fedebachi fans might not like him. But, but still. Then, you know, you, you're if your nation, national team's doing really well under a certain manager, you've got to like him. Then, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, no matter where he goes, you just think of what he's done for your country as a, as a whole. Yeah. You know, and, and, and he, I think anybody who draws Turkey in their group, World Cup or European You Champions, know you're in for a game. Yeah, definitely, yeah. You, 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 that's a game you think, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you know you've got to go to Turkey as well and play. Yeah, exactly. So, I, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, tactically then, after those signs that we have brought in, I'm not securing anybody because we've got so much good squad depth now. The only position I'm playing is Kalulu at right back. The reason for that, I don't think we have a good right back. If we go to squad depth and we take a look at this, right back's mainly the position where we're struggling, I think, the most. But Kalulu is also considered to be our best centre back. But I think he's better on the right. And we've got Marcao, we've got Papetti, we've even got Kamaro Sakara who can play there. So if you take a look at this squad depth, Nico Lopez is highly regarded, Ali Ackman's there, and we've got Umar, we've got Erkin Kirku who's just come in. Kostic goes on the left as well. So I think we've really filled this team now with some quality players yeah. all around the pitch. That's the reason why the only player who's secured is Kalulu. And schedule wise, if we take a look at this, we Ooh. find ourselves in the Europa League this because obviously start. we finished in third place yeah. last season. Uh, we managed to overcome Pauk in the first couple of legs that we had to play. And Copenhagen, who give us a one or draw away, we beat them 4 0 at home. 
to a great start, really. Yeah. Uh, Leeds in a friendly there, four-one to start us off. Good, good showing, really. Yeah. Current league holders, Trabzonspor, we embarrassed them at their own stadium, three-nil. So a good win Still there. In the Super Cup, yeah. Yeah. Filip Kostic making his name in the Turkish league with two goals very yeah. early on. A another three-nil win away from home. We've played two away, go away games there, and then we played them at home for some reason. So I oh, know uh, to begin with that was a Super Cup. Yeah. Then game. we've played them at yeah. home in a two-nil win. Great two-nil win there. Two late goals as well. Look. Very late goals. goals. Yeah. Ninetieth, ninety-third minute. Got to be happy with that. Yeah. And then a nil-nil draw, unfortunately, in the oh. game where we. We should be winning. This yeah. team seems to be our bit of a bogey team. We've drew against them a couple of times now. It cost us the league last year. Maybe it will cost us again this We've year. We've got a bad draw though for the, uh, the Europa League next round. So no, so Dynamo Zagreb, mm. Napoli, and Gens. Yeah, I'll be disappointed. I'll be disappointed if we get, don't get second, you know? Yeah, I would as well. I you think Napoli at, are the runaway from that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a tricky one. So, okay. Fourth season, we need to bump things back up again. We, we rested on our laurels, I think. Yeah. End of season three. Let's simulate this season four. And we retain, we come back, oh. we win, and we demolish. By a mile. 88 points. Only lost two games. Only two games lost. One, I mean, Istanbul was one of them, uh, but the other team, obviously, I don't really recognise. They got relegated. Yeah. Um, so that was a bad result from us. Might have been resting our players that game, though. Yeah. Fed have actually finished down in sixth place, so they dropped from second to sixth to Absonspor there in second place. But again, yeah, they were nowhere near yeah. us. Ali Ackman scored 28 league goals. Look at the goal difference between the, us and everybody else in that league. No one scored above 30 goals. No. We've doubled that. Yeah. That's a hell of an achievement. Uh, for a goal difference. Yeah. New signing Pierre Kalulu came in and got the highest average rating in the league. New signing Philip Kostic came in and got the second highest average rating in the league. Altai Bienda got the most clean sheets. So it was a fantastic start to this, well, a fantastic start to looking at this season. Uh, let's take a look then at past positions. Did we dominate throughout the whole, yeah. Here we go. Easy, 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 easy. That was that was really class from us, to be honest. Yeah. We had the most goals, fewest conceded, most clean sheets. Not only we good going forward, good coming back. Yeah. We also did the domestic double. Trabzonspor, we got our right, we got our own back, back on them. Yeah. Three 0 victory Get against Trabzonspor. Ali Akman got ten goals in total, including two in the final. With our other team favourite, Nico Lopez, getting on on the act as well on the 30th minute. That game was done and dusted after 30 minutes. So that's the double again. That is the double again. It's all down to European competitions now. Come on. Well, unfortunately, Red Bull Salzburg lost to Leicester in the final. And if we take a look at this, Red Bull Salzburg were the team that knocked us out. That's a pity, isn't it? That's yeah. just a shame. It's another team which has come back to, to haunt us again yeah. because it's a team we couldn't beat previously. They beat us 3-2 uh, in the second Ooh. in the second leg. We were 0-0 to begin with. Because that was per Spurs result there, look, mate. Yeah, but the, did they get to the final? No, they no, didn't. they didn't. Really. So, I mean, where did they get to? I'm, I'm interested now. They didn't even get to the semi-final, semi no. quarter-final. They lost to Red Bull Salzburg. <laughs> In the previous winners, though, I mean, look at this. Lazio were the first winners. Then it was Real Madrid, Man United, and Leicester. So, look at the English teams. I found my English link. Right. Okay. Formed in 1905, like I said to you. They started off with their kit. Yeah. Red and white. Okay. Turkish right. flag. Turkish flag. That's where they got it from. No, they, they they weren't too happy with that. So next season, I think, or the season after, they changed it to yellow and black. Okay. Which is. Kind of close to Fenerbahce colours. That's right. That's probably that might have been what they changed. I don't know. They, they didn't say what they changed, but they, when they finally decided to go for a, a, a particular colour, they they done it through a company from Birmingham. Oh right, okay. Um, it was a kit supplier, and they they gave them all these materials to look at. And the president at the time, he quite liked the colours that they're playing now because he said it's to do with fire. Yeah, it's the red the, and yellow. Yeah, the very red. much orange. Yeah, when you're looking into a fire, it's more of that colour that burnt red yeah. he calls it burnt red and then burnt yellow and all that and it's sort of like give us a bit more fire into the team and all that make us make us sort of like strong and all that and yeah. that's where the colors finally come from but what i've seen as well one of the first games that they played in was a friendly against a british ship okay. football team hms barham right we're obviously cruising around and they come off and played a friendly against yeah. them and that's one of the games that they played. They played in the first uh, in that kit. Weird link. Yeah, it's weird. There's always a link. So the, the kit come from a British company. Yeah. And the, one of the first games against the British ship. So pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I love like these that. Little, yeah, yeah. When I you do. find it, when I find that, I think, oh, yeah, here's a British yeah. link. It's brilliant. And we know you like the facts. We yeah, know, we yeah. see it all the time. So okay, let's take a look then at our squad because we know we're scoring a lot of goals. Ali Akman got 47 in total, uh, and Karim, this guy here, who's been playing out on the wing, he's a bit of a young talent at the start of the game for us. 
Uh, he's done very well. 22 goals and 10 assists. It looks like to me he is the guy playing from the left majority of the time. Uh, oh, yeah, on the left of Trekatista, but he kind of fills in in every single role. And he's been bagging goals and assists left, right and centre, obviously, where we can see. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, look at that. We've got four players who have scored double fi double figures. Not bad at all, really, is it? No. And no, even Philip Kostic is getting what, 12 assists. We're building a good side here. Again, Patreon members, you've got a future yeah. here if you'd like to take it on. We're going to obviously see the challenge after next season. But first, we've got to do that season. So let's take a look at our transfers. Now, the first out was Burak Ince. I mentioned him at the start. He never really developed how I'd like him. Like, this isn't our first team potential. No. Now, we could have kept him hold for you guys, the Patreon members, but I thought we need to bring in a little bit of money to, to get the first team a little bit better. I want to do something in Europe. I yeah. want to do something. So, yeah. we sold him to Man City £10.75 million. It's quite a lot of money. Got a bit of reason why Man City buy him, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Burak <laughs> Ince did play 27 games last season, yeah. so he has done quite well. But what I was worried about was our assistant manager decision making because it does look like he's been playing him at centre midfield, at defensive midfield and at centre back. Uh, if he's playing that much at centre back, it is quite scary. Yeah. So I'm questioning what our assistant manager is doing really when we're not filling the roles, whether we have a big enough squad or not. But we have started bringing players in. Martin Satriano, 24 years of age, Uruguayan striker. He is incredible. I dare say he's probably better in some aspects than Ali Ackman. Yeah. Whether people would, would agree with me or not, but £2.9 million pound because he went back to Uruguay, which is quite rare, really, that you yeah. see a player of his calibre going back to Uruguay. We pinched him when he had scored 15 goals in 15 games. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, in the, European, in the Uruguayan uh, top division. He's got one for us so far in three games. He wasn't the only signing we made, though, because we brought in a lot of free transfers, which we'll take a look at in a sec, because I have been very busy. But what I've also been doing is securing the future. Now, the future looks bright for Galatasaray. 18 years of age. This guy looks phenomenal for 18. We've picked him up from Midland in Denmark. But he's Turkish. Turkish yeah. He's Turkish in Denmark. So, fantastic player there for you he's guys played, to enjoy in the future. He's playing for the under-21s as well. Yeah. Right, so, that's good. And he will probably be paying a bit of a start in our first team this year. I haven't put him in the reserves or anything, even though he's only 18. He's very much capable, at least doing a good job coming off the bench. Fairly professional personality, which means he'll probably grow into a role. That's not the only youngster that we've brought in. Uh, this guy, Bogdan, he's Romanian, but he is still really good. Very capable set of striker who can also play centre attack and midfielder. £2.8 million from UTA Arad. Not bad at all. Ante Rebic, though, a free transfer. I'm really happy with this. I yeah. love Ante Rebic. He's a good player. Another like Frankfurt him. link because he used to play for Eintracht Frankfurt when they you won the Cup. you got more connections than I thought you had. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But a quality player you think who will, will add a lot to our first team this season. Not bad for a free transfer. Let's take a look at some more though because 19 years of age as a free Turkish transfer. Player, yeah. Another Turkish player. Very good. Zafir Anik. Another Turkish player. 17 on a free transfer. I couldn't believe the amount of bargains I was picking up. Yeah. This guy is an amazing free transfer. Another midfield player who I think is quality. Love his hair as well. Yeah. Good God. L'Oreal, you're worth it. Like that is, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I like him. Austrian, 24 years of age at the start of the game. On a free transfer from Wolfsburg is not bad at all. Played a lot of games in the uh, Austrian Bundesliga and did very well. And finally, a free transfer from Besiktas, one of their highest rated youngsters, a four star potential goalkeeper. We're thinking future here, 19 years of age. Hasn't played any games at the at the start, but I mean, he's an under-21 cat. 19, yeah. 19 years of age, 30 professional personality. I've done a lot to make sure that our future is secured. Yeah. One out, though, which I'm not too happy with, Gustavo being one of them, he's gone to Santos. We haven't really played him. We've brought in a lot of other players now. But Nico Lopez has gone. Ooh. Yeah. Arguably been our best player so far of this yeah. rebuild. Uh, we just lost our best player in our last season. 31 years of age, 2.5 million pounds. We only brought him in for 2.3, and he has been quality for us most seasons. Now, Sassuolo came in and he, he was rocked a bit. He wanted to leave, and yeah. I couldn't understand why. And then that's when I realized I might as well just sell him because we started bringing other players, and I mentioned you can only register a certain amount of players. Mm. And it turns out he would be one of the slots that I can get rid of to secure one of the midfielders that we've brought in and make the whole squad better. So it's a sacrifice I think we were willing to make. Yeah, I mean, the fans have loved him anyway. He'd done us a favour in a few games. So. For sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, I wonder if he is like a, a favoured personnel or something like that. I mean, we're a favoured personnel. Nico Lopez is classed as an icon. There you go. So yeah. he's higher than what they regard me. Yeah. 
<laughs> Mental, really. Uh, okay, so tactically then, this is what we're looking at. A few slight changes in the in regards to mentality and a ball playing defender in Papetti uh, just to make sure he is secure because, I'm, like I mentioned, I'm questioning why we're playing Barak Inter centre-back. Yeah. Um, so there we go. But the rest of the uh, the plans is out there. So if we take a look now at pick without restriction at our best 11, this is what it rates as. So Cthulhu and Zakaria in midfield. we got Erkan and Kirku there. Rabic on the left, Satriano up top, not Ali Akman, which is interesting. And Umar on the right with Kalulu, Pellegrini and Marcao in, in, uh, in defence with Altai in the net. How have we done so far at the start of the season then? So the Super Cup, we lost the Super Cup 2-1. Champs on support, but then we beat them straight after in the league. I'd say that's more of an important game to win. You take that, yeah. We ended up winning all three games this season so far. 3-1 win and a 5-1 win. Good start. Good start, yes. Competitions then. What a difficult group Ooh. in the Champions League we have. <laughs> but it was automatic in the Champions League, which means the coefficient points. Yeah, We're very starting good. to build something here. Yeah. But PSG and Manchester what, United. What two teams to draw against, isn't it? You're, yeah. you're fighting for third, aren't you? Absolutely. So Ernesto Valverde is currently the Manchester United manager and PSG currently has Rudy Garcia there. Uh, so a few difficult teams yeah. that we're going to play against because Luda Gretz has knocked us out in previous competitions. Like I said earlier, though, you've got to win your own games. We're in a chance. We win our own games. Yeah, absolutely. But Anything can happen then, can it? going to be tricky. <laughs> Yeah. Right, let's simulate this final season and see how we do. So the final season, we win the league again quite comfortably six uh, by points. six points. Not as much as what it was previously, but I think we had like harder Champions League games and stuff that yeah. were probably resting our players for. Ali Akman got 31 goals. Kirku and Ali Akman got the highest average rate and Kirku and Kostic got the most assists in the season. Very good from us. We'll take a look at past positions and see. We pretty much dominated yeah. the majority of the season there. Two consistent seasons there. Very good. Very good indeed. Let's take a look at other competitions though because in the league we were the runners up. Trabzonspor in the League Cup. It looks like League and Cup is between us two then. No, yeah, I mean, no, we've, we've traded with them for the last couple dear, of seasons. Dear. So that's disappointing to yeah. lose to them 2-1 there in the final. Eric and Kirk, who got our goal, and they scored two in two minutes in the second half of the, of the, uh, of the game, which cost us eventually. So that's disappointing. We do yeah. have to look at our like player ratings, a lot of 6.5s and stuff. That's what's cost us just bad game for us yeah. even though we had a, a lot more shots to them a lot more chances it was a bad game but champions league how do we do well we got to the quarter final by liverpool we were knocked out so which we, means we qualified, we qualified. yes we what, beat don't, liverpool don't tell me don't tell me liverpool. man united got knocked out we beat liverpool in one leg because they beat us 4-1 in the away leg, which yeah. meant they went through 6-3. So we beat them in the first, or we drew, I can't remember we'll how probably it went beat out. Them at home or something like that. Yeah, so let's take a look. First round knockout stage, we eliminated Rangers in the first round knockout stage. Right, yeah. That tells me that was an easier draw. So either us or Rangers won the Champions League group. Now it was Rangers who eliminated, well, Ajax, Dortmund and Lyon. But we knocked out PSG. PSG. In the Champions League group. You've got to take that, haven't you? Yeah, the three games that we won. We beat Ludogorets twice. We beat Manchester United at home. Oh. Yeah, we mentioned it, didn't we? How difficult yeah. that would have been. We then drew to PSG and drew to Man United in the away legs and only lost to PSG, but we still eliminated them, which is hilarious, to be honest. 11 points Can you look at their qualified. team? Yeah, we can look at their team. If we take a look here and go on their tactics, this is basically their main starting 11 that they have. Jao Felix... Lataro Martinez, Chiesa, Jude Bellingham, Jorginho. They have a world-class team. This is mental. They've yeah. got Kareem Adeyemi on the bench. This is an unbelievable team that they've managed to do. Neymar's uh, still there. Neymar's still there. He's not even getting into their first no. team. They got Aaron Wambasaka, Antonio Rudiger, who's not even getting onto the bench. Hervin Lozano, Martial. It's a mental team. What a team to knock out, then, eh? Yeah, and yet we've knocked them out. The Manchester United team, interestingly, we'll take a look at them while we're here because I'm quite intrigued, to be honest. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, at who they've got. They still have Maguire and Varane. That's 
Bloody hell. Okay. David uh, Deere and Jingo still there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Neto's Fernandez there. Fernandez still there. Proctor's and still Popper's there. still there. It's very much a similar team, I'd say. They're just... Look who's up front. Yeah, Greenwood. He needs to be up front, to be yeah. honest. They have Luis Suarez, which is not the right Luis Suarez. It's the Colombian version. Yeah. But he's still very decent. Uh, Salamiekas sure, is there. left back as well. That's good. Yeah, yeah. they've got Anthony in the, in, in the team. So it's, it's very good. Very good team that they've yeah. managed to assemble as well. It's not surprising that they've gone through. But I can't believe we've managed to do that, Dad, no. to be honest. I mean, Liverpool go on and win it, who knocked us out in the quarterfinals. But that's a successful gotta, season. I've got to be happy with that. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, all right, we lost the cup. So we won the league, we lost the cup, but we got to... Was it quarterfinals? Quarterfinals. Quarterfinals of the Champions League. What a season. Yeah, absolutely. So finally then, goals. 43 goals in 38 games and 11 off the bench from Ali Akman. Uh, Satriano got 21 goals from 16 league starts with 30 off the bench. 21 goals from Erkan Kirku in that Trakatista role in behind the striker. 85 goals and three Ravich. strikers is good, isn't it? Mental. Can't Mental. Argue with that. So, Dad, the last question is then: What is the target for the Patreon members? I want to put a target out there of achieving the same as what we did, but probably a little bit better, as in win the league, win the cup, get to a quarter final of the Champions League. Yeah. How about go one better, win four leagues? So I think that's what yeah. we did, wasn't it? We won four leagues, we lost one of them. Yeah. So try and win four out of the next five leagues at least. You should be able to win all the bigger, five. The bigger challenges to get the almost get the treble. Can you we, get the you treble? Know, that's, the, that's the best we could do, and I think well over cheap by doing that. Yeah, absolutely. We're disappointed so in other competitions. We set up a team that's good enough to do it. Yeah. Can you take it to that next level then? Can absolutely. you get to the semi final? Could you get to the final? I mean the final. Champions League final. What an experience that'd be for yeah, the yeah. Turkish side to be there. Yeah, absolutely. So can you do that? Let me know. You've got the Patreon members down there. The link is down below in the description. Five pound tier. You get the save game file as this video you has released. Like get that like button. Yeah. Let us know if you can do any of these things in the five years. Let me know yeah. on my Discord, on Twitter, anything like that you can tag me in. I'll be really interested. I can keep start the, retweeting keep the rest that of the stuff. Comments in. We love reading the comments. Yeah, Absolutely. So thank you very much for watching and supporting once again. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.